In this episode, we are rolling back the clock as we take some old footage that never made it into an episode and we finally get to look at it. We've got hunting footage from all the way back in 2017 and what's really interesting in this episode is you're going to see the evolution of technology over the past five years ranging from sort of old um, uh, infrared night vision systems and older um, air gun systems where we're shooting pellets and very very early uh, Nielsen slugs out the impact and crown um, moving all the way to today where we go out with a very modern thermal rifle scope and hunt um, hunt rats and, and hares. We're going to get the ball rolling with some Egyptian goose hunting from all the way back in the dark ages of 2016. The problem with Egyptian geese is that they love to plonk themselves on perfectly curated lawns, rip them up and then leave their signature mess all over the place. This is the tool we'll be using to sort them out. Look familiar? Yep, this is a Gen 1 FX Impact and I have it topped off with an SWFA fixed 16x rifle scope. The significance of 2016 for me was that it was round about the time that I shifted away from mixing a mill reticle and an MOA turret and started dialing my turrets more often. Scope cam technology has come leaps and bounds since this was filmed. This was a Casio camera that filmed at 120 frames per second at a very low resolution, but hey, it worked. And I was able to drop this goose where he stood. Stone dead, eh? Dead. <laughs> Not going anywhere. The benefit of the fixed magnification scope is also that the reticle subtensions remained usable at all times. And this also encouraged me to start shifting over to first focal plane. When 2017 rolled along, we started to see some more changes. For this hunt, I used the same impact but with a side shot magazine, which FX would eventually incorporate into the FX Mark II. This was still shooting pellets, but the newly released Crown was now set up to shoot 23 grand Nielsen slugs. This was the early days of shooting slugs, and we were learning so much along the way. The Crown was also topped off with the Aztec scope, which I did a little bit of design work on, and this was my first time working with Shane Keller, who would later become my partner at Element Optics. The very same year, Shane won extreme bench rest and I took second place. Pretty funny to look back on. And lastly, we had the Huben K1, which back in 2017 had mind-blowing power for a 22 caliber air gun, 80 foot-pounds. Nowadays, a factory Panthera or Impact is easily surpassing that with far better accuracy, but the Huben played an instrumental part in opening my eyes to these possibilities and I had it topped off with my very first first focal plane scope, an SWFA 5-20. Each one of these air guns would be shooting a different projectile on this day, so it was going to be very interesting. Let's start off with a simple shot on a pigeon with impact, and straight away you'll see a huge improvement in scope cam technology. This was filmed through a Sony RX100 at 1000 frames per second. Pretty awesome. Still with the impact, this goose took a pellet to the vitals and toppled right over. The crown shooting the 23 grand javelins was not able to put out much power. I believe this was only around 860 feet per second, which is crazy looking back. And I had to hold quite a lot for this one. The slug lands in the neck and passes right through without expanding and the goose eventually runs out of gas and switches off. I mentioned the slugs not expanding, well back in 2017 Nielsen was just starting to make slugs for 22 kill air guns and these were very much untested on furry and feathery animals. From this footage we learned that the slugs were not expanding that well and that they needed bigger hollow points and a softer lead formula. That being said, the shots that passed through the vitals were still able to do the damage and this goose was sent to the afterlife with a pass through in the engine room. I switched back to the impact for the shot, wanting the tried and tested precision of the pellets for a headshot. The pellet dropped a little bit low but still passed through the neck, doing the business.
This is one of the more interesting shots of the day. This slug landed a bit low and hit the water but must have either bounced or simply plowed through the goose because once again this one gets switched off right away. It's particularly cool to see the water droplets glimmering in the sunlight at a thousand frames a second. This goose lifted its chest out of the water for a few seconds and I took the opportunity to send a slug through the lower neck. Egyptian geese have a brown spot on their chest and in South Africa we like to call it an aim point. <laughs> Once again the slug does not expand and continues right through but good shot placement gets the job done. This one also lands a little bit low and once again you can see the unopened slug continuing on and the goose shutting down. Me and my family in a nice bride today. Here are a couple more shots taken with the impact and this one is probably my favorite clip of the day. Thousand frames a second, a moving target and he cops one right to the back of the head. The shot was cool but it's the awesome slow-mo footage afterwards with the flapping and the water droplets that really puts a smile on my face. Pretty straightforward shot on this goose, once again right behind the head, and the 18 grain JSB pellet does the job. This was taken with the Huben K1 and it puts this crow down nicely. But you can see the wobbling of the slug here, this barrel fouled up very easily and it's one of the reasons that I lost a little bit of confidence in this gun over the years. Still a very interesting piece of technology though. And the last one from this day, another goose and a textbook headshot. We always try to retrieve what we shoot, but the geese in the water were munched by some very aggressive terrapins before we could get our hands on them and in a few minutes there was literally nothing more than feathers and bones. The rest though were given to the local workers and they were stoked to be able to take some meat home. You want him? Yes. Okay. We got three of them. They know this game is not going to see their men or Which ones? Yes. The geese? Yes. I know that. They know <laughs> they every time they see the bug <laughs> Having seen the light, so to speak, with the vastly improved ballistic coefficient and terminal energy of the newly discovered air gun slugs, we wanted to do some more tests, this time on a furry mammal. On this night we'd be using the same 23 gram Nielsen slugs and would also be testing a rebated bow tail design. These had been extensively tested in water, gel and clay, but had been a little bit hit and miss on furry and feathery targets, which we discovered could clog up the hollow point. I do have a slightly different setup tonight in that I'm shooting uh, slugs and not pellets which is not something new but it's the first time I'm doing this in a night vision hunt so it's the first time I'm trying it on a furry animal like a hare um, so it's it's going to be kind of experimental I don't know if you can call it like the evolution of of Matt's air gun setup or if you can just call it experimentation but either way I think we're slowly figuring out what works and what doesn't work and I'm just really excited to see how this setup works so I think without wasting any more time, let's get out there, let's walk around and see if we can find anything. Perfect. We shouldn't get a chance on a hare to take a headshot and no problems there. The exit, I mean the entrance hole was right there, um, just behind the eye, you can hardly even see it, but the exit, it just, it just blew the brains out on the back end of it, dropped right on the spot. Uh, I'll just tell Should you I go that. for a body shot? 
When we get another opportunity, we intentionally decide to take a heart and lung shot to compare terminal performance. Here you go. Hmm? Are you still there? Easy. Done. Is it down? Done. Nice. Okay, so... So that was a hot lung. Finished. Okay. Can't even find the, the entrance hole. That's how, that's how, um, how, how easily these slugs go through. They're quite sharp, so they just penetrate a pinhole on the entrance. But then the exit, it's just torn a, a hole probably the size of a coin out the other side here. Um, so obviously the, the heart and lungs uh, would have been damaged really badly and would have, it would have been finished within a couple seconds. So that's what you want to see on a heart and lung shot. Um, very very happy with that um, so now I know if I need to take a heart and lung shot I can do that and it will do the job fantastic the last shot of the evening was a headshot and once again down on the spot um, do you want to mention that I'm using the smooth twist X barrel and not the standard smooth twist you will need the smooth twist X if you're going to use the slugs and hopefully these are available soon this is a prototype version that I, I offered to test for FX so far it's performing very well but um, hopefully that'll be available soon so you can shoot slugs out of your impact. That's it guys, that's three lovely hairs, um, all perfect kills. I'm going to call it a night there. Hope to see you next time, thanks for watching. It's not just lawns that Egyptian geese like to ruin. This person's wooden deck had been completely destroyed and I was called in to try to sort out the problem. These two shots came out awesome and showed just how confident I've become with the precision of these yeah. light slugs since I'd started using them around a year prior. Super cool. That's a couple more problem animals down and another happy person getting a free meal. That's my favorite. You like it? <laughs> you like it? Thank you. And then you got to keep it. Thank you very much. And now let's fast forward to 2023. So much has changed. For one, we're now pushing much heavier slugs at much higher speeds through the Impact M3, we've got more reliable accuracy, more reliable terminal performance, and some super cool scopes at our disposal to help us find the animals that we're looking for. On a recent hunting trip, I fitted the new Element Immersive 5x30 to my 600mm Impact M3. This gun is shooting 26 grain javelins at well over a thousand feet per second without even breaking a sweat and it's still extremely accurate. This little scope has awesome clarity, a very intelligent reticle designed by Ilya Koshkin and a very wide field of view making it perfect for pest control. I took tons of shots of this setup on this hunting trip but I'm just going to show you one on this video, a dove that our host on the farm took a shot at. You can see just how much energy is dumped here, it's super effective. On the same hunting trip, we got to fit the Pulsar Thermion to the same impact and head out for some hares. And you'll see the full episode later, but the standout for me is just how far hunting at night has evolved. The ATN that we were using back in 2017 relied on an infrared spotlight and therefore struggled a bit past 80 meters or so, whereas the thermal can pick up heat signatures from kilometers away. Hares in particular like to hide in the low brush, making them quite hard to pick up with infrared the thermal just lights them up and allows for a quick and easy dispatch. The real fun for me personally is the ability to see wildlife in so much detail going about their business. Like these kudus for example, or these bat-eared foxes using their big satellite ears to find snacks. On this particular night we were actually looking for jackals and while we didn't see any jackals, the sheer amount of game that we got to see made it all worth it. To wrap up this video, here's some footage of some more rats being popped with the impact inside a warehouse. With an infrared unit, you often need to look for the reflection of a rat's eyes in order to actually spot it properly, but with Thermion using red hot mode, they show up like little light bulbs. It's pretty awesome. I definitely enjoyed putting this footage together. Um, I always feel like 
it sucks when I film something and I'm not able to put a full episode out uh, with it. This footage was actually lost for years. I only found it again recently. So I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, let me know. I'll keep these random hunts videos going. And if you want to see more like this, please subscribe. It helps you to stay notified of when I put, put new stuff up and it helps me out too. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.